You've all heard of Adam Smith, right? Adam Smith, the inventor of modern economics and the Scottish Enlightenment. And David Hume was a philosopher that you know, really challenged this idea of you know, the selfish hypothesis, that people are, are inalienably selfish. And Hume and Smith between them cooked up the Scottish Enlightenment. They cooked up the, the modern idea of our economies. And it's a paradigm that we're all working now. And what's at the core of it, folks, right? What's at the core of it is that we, we allow capitalism, we encourage innovation, we do all that for social benefit. So, you ask the question, what's public policy got to do around innovation? What public policy has got to do around innovation is ensure that that social benefit is delivered. So I've spent <coughs> 150 million Canadian dollars this week. It's great, it's not my money, it's yours. Uh, and I spent it on personalised medicine, genomics and personalised medicine. And here in Canada, well, you've got the same whole set of problems that we've got in the UK. And you're a very, very highly regulated society. And of the $150 million I've spent this week, one of the things that we've been thinking about all the time is, it's brilliant, fantastic science, brilliant science. Some of it is addressing indigenous people. Some of it is looking at how you take decisions around new technologies. Some of it's inventing new treatments for everything from, oh, I don't know, cancer through to uh, childhood pediatric uh, uh, rare diseases. Question is, if the science works, will it ever actually get to the people that need it and deliver the benefit we need? We have to stop thinking that we have to be nice about it, right? And so let me tell you, I get to see thousands of entrepreneurs every year who have an environmental idea, right? But you know what I say to all of them? Because about two thirds, maybe even 90%, they always say to me, you know what? My idea is great. It's going to save the world. Sure. And I'm going to be dead before we convince all of the major companies in the world that we're going to save the world with your technology. Let me be clear. If it doesn't get deployed, the environmental benefit never happens, ladies and gentlemen. So you got to marry the supply and the demand. And right now, we have great ideas, we research, but there's no connection to demand. And that's in every sector I've learned, not just environment. One thing that happens when you have some great public policy minds um, develop a policy, let's say carbon tax, is it becomes a panacea that that's all we talk about and we don't talk about what happens on the ground when that gets executed, okay? And the challenge with big ideas of public policy is not that they're funded a bait and that they have meaning. They do, they have all of those things. But what happens is that once you set that vision out, the world starts to mutate and the execution can be quite different from what you intended at the beginning. The pace of new ideas is changing and it's cross-sectoral and it's breaking down the way that we initially systemically and structurally thought about how businesses work. What innovation policy needs to do, right, is look at all the supply side stuff and the demand side and make sure that supply and demand actually work together so that when you make neat things that are going to change people's life, they get them. I don't know a country that does that well. So if there's one thing that Canada can do to get ahead of the game, it's that integration of supply and demand. So we can get back to, you know, what my forefathers, what yours thought in the late 18th century. It's about using people's ability to create wealth to deliver social benefit. That's what policy is about.